<laughs> Amongst MMO fans, there's this kind of mysterious, almost mythical game and development, uh, so far only known as Copernicus at 38 Studios, run by uh, baseball player Kurt Schilling. And uh, before that MMO is actually even revealed, um, they were going to do a single player, uh, single player mm. uh, game set in the same world, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Yeah. And it's starting to look good. Yeah, I mean, it's talk about, you know, taking on projects. <laughs> Starting out a studio doing an MMO and then adding a, an open world RPG to that. That's a, that's a big task ahead of you for 38 Studios. But of course, what they did was they actually bought big, huge games from THQ. So they had that team that had been retooled from an RTS team to an RPG team. They were working on two RPGs for THQ at the time. Uh, headed by Ken Ralston, who's, uh, who was the lead designer on, on uh, Oblivion. And they, they took that team and they set them uh, in on, on the task of creating a, a game set in the same RA, Salvatore Creative World. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know. Yeah, we're, no, we're, we're noticing already that there are quite a lot of big names attached to 38 Studios. Names, yeah. We have, of course, Kurt Schilling, which is mostly known for, for baseball. Yes. <laughs> Uh, lead designer on uh, Oblivion. We have uh, Ari Salvatore that you mentioned, which is a fantasy writer. And we have Todd McFarlane, mm. which comic fans uh, will know from Spawn, well, Spawn primarily, for, for people of our generation, yeah. probably more uh, Spider-Man. Um, how does that... Do I, well, uh, what, what I happened was that... I lost my train of thought. But yeah, K Kurt Schilling uh, was a... a Big, big star in Major League Baseball uh, pitcher, uh, and uh, he was a huge fan of things like EverQuest. And he played it a lot, you know, in between playing. You know, as a pitcher in baseball, you don't really. I mean, let's let's be honest. You you work like every fifth, sixth day or something like that. <laughs> you, th you, th you throw a game, so it's it's you get a lot of of, of spare time. And and he played a lot of MMOs in that that time and. And it, He's uh, living the dream, yeah, making yeah. a lot of money. And, and towards the end of his career, he, he, he created 38 Studios with R.A. Salvatore and Todd McFarlane to create a splash, basically. He wanted big names to sort of set the stage. These days, it's a 250-man studio, yeah. so it's, it's a pretty, pretty big deal. And, and I think Reckoning has sort of been flying a little bit under the radar. People haven't really known what to, what to make of it. But uh, what I saw looked really great. Um, it's... I wouldn't say, I would say it's like a, a mixture of, of what, what you would see in Fable and something like, uh, like Elder Scrolls. It's like a, the art style is, is, is with way more colors. It's more colorful than Fable, I would say. Uh, and it really doesn't look like an Elder Scrolls game in that sense. And it's more visual. And I think from like uh, how the spells are, are shown, it's more like a Dragon Age yeah. kind, of, kind of game, which all of this mixed together makes for a, for a really interesting uh, thing. And what's also interesting is is how they've uh, it's set in, in something called the Age of Arcana, which which means that everyone is is using magic. So uh, all the attacks, all the combos, everything is like infused with magic, and and it's just a visual feast, you know, basically the the the, the gameplay there and and uh, you know we got a, a pretty good demo of it and it looks you know. I know everyone's excited about Skyrim. You know, we'll we'll let you play that for a while, and then <laughs> Kingdoms of Amalur: Reckoning will come in 2012. So, you know, uh, and and really, they, that's a, of course a conscious thing. They don't want to get out anywhere near Skyrim yeah. or or Mass Effect 3, for that matter. They they want to stay steer clear of that. Uh, but th this is a, a really brilliant game in its own right, and and. Uh, from from the looks of it, so and it's kind of a, a make or break for for Third Age Studios yeah. because they, they they need the money. Yeah, well, I mean, basically, when you make a, a huge game like that, you you need it to to have some sort of payoff, and yeah. and also because all their projects are tied together, you know, if if this one isn't a success, it's going to be very hard to make people excited about the MMO. So, yeah. so it, it all works together, and and and. Um, and uh, you know, we'll see what, what happens with that. That's not our thing to worry about. <laughs> but you know, reckoning. Uh, you know, an interesting thing is you know all the Elder Scrolls games start out with you in a, in a 
throw them into a, a dungeon, you know, prison cell or something like that. Uh, this one actually starts with you in a, in a pile of corpses. And, and the reason for this is that you've been resurrected by something called the Well of Souls. And it's a little bit, like, there's a, like a gnome-like character who's, who's brought you back to life. Go gnomes. And, and, and um, yeah, uh, <laughs> lost my train of thought there. <laughs> anyway, wh what this means is that everyone in this world has a fate, but not you because you've been resurrected. So you can change things. You, you have the power to change. Your, your fate isn't written. So that's sort of the, like the setup for you going out there and saving the world or whatever. Yeah, how, do, how does the storyline feel? Because as we mentioned, Ori Salvatore is, is uh, he's leading the team that, that's mm. building the world and setting the stage, both of course in the single player game yeah. and for the MMO. And he's, if you don't know him, he's a famous fantasy writer. He's been writing Star Wars books. He's been writing Dungeons and Dragons books. Mm. Um, and his own stuff as well. Yeah, he's a, yeah. Uh, of course his own stuff as well. Um, how, how did the story feel when, you, when you're looking at it? Well, I mean, we didn't really get into the heavy parts of the story. I mean, uh, and, and Kurt Schilling described it like this. I mean, the, the challenge for the team is to break down our A. Salvatore stories into little pieces. You know, not because, you know, he's a fancy writer. Yeah. So it's not really the same sort of narrative that you want for a video game. Um, and, uh, you know, the start of the game, you really you just want to find out why was I resurrected, what's happening here, and, you know, what's it all about. And you meet this, this gnome-like character, and he, he gives you a, a bit of an idea of it, but, you know, things are going to escalate from there in typical RPG fashion, you know. Yeah. yeah. It, should, it should be mentioned that we actually have, uh, you, you go back into the GRTV archives, we have a great interview with Ari Salvatore from last year at GDC. Yes, uh, when we didn't really know what either of these games No, we didn't know anything, but uh, hearing uh, Salvatore talk about yeah. uh, how yeah. he, he, he and his team built the world. Yes, and uh, you know, I'm very excited about, about Reckoning, and I, I think that it's, it, it really has a lot of potential, and uh, uh, it's really one of those games that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited about it because it's, it's a new thing. It's not a sequel and we should be happy that, you know, there are new and exciting IPs out there to look forward to. And, and I definitely think that this is one of them. And, and uh, you know, it's just, uh, there's a lot of nice ideas in it and uh, hopefully they will all pan out. Yeah.